All right, welcome everyone to this great talk. This video game developer used the STL and you'll never guess what happened next. Uh, so, as any good talk, uh, this talk started as a joke. Uh, I made a joke on Twitter about uh, two years ago from now, uh, and um, people liked it. And you know, you should never take, I know you should not take like likes on Twitter as endorsement or encouragement, but I still did. Uh, and so here we are with this talk. And I know people have been asking me about the titles, even the conference organizer have been like, but really, like, isn't that a bit too clickbaity? Uh, maybe we should have called it, like, I don't know, something much more like uh, stern and, and, and neutral, like STL and video games. But then to understand what I'm talking about, you would have to go to some place and just look at the schedule and then read the abstract. And real no reading is for nerds. So I wanted something more catchy. I also thought about like something even more catchy, but I still don't think that some people uh, can attend this year, so that joke would have been uh, lost to some people. So here we are, a uh, bit of a clickbaity title, uh, but that's the that's that's one of the points I wanted to raise uh, that we'll talk about later in the talk, which is the discourse that uh, we can see around uh, the STL uh, and the video game industry. So to talk a bit about the STL, uh, the standard template library, uh, it's not something very really recent. Uh, actually, it's uh, it came from this uh, from this great piece of uh, of, um, of research um, uh, that was proposed in 1993 by uh, Alex Stepanov in a time where uh, the C++ community was really wondering which direction C++ is taking, and more importantly, they had the real the, the strong uh, interrogation: what do we do for containers? Uh, what do we do for uh, sorts? What do we do for algorithms? Uh, and yeah, in 93, Alex Stepanov, based on his work, comes up and offers this. Uh, it's adopted the next year uh, and uh, basically uh, gets into the, 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 the standard and the language. Uh, as you can see, back in the days, we uh, were extremely fast uh, to implement new things in the standard and adopt them, but those were different times. And the whole idea of the, of the standard template library is to offer a set of uh, generic containers and algorithm for, for C++, like every language should have by now. Some of you may have not been born in 1994 or were too uh, young to remember it. So I kind of, uh, I was there in 1994 and I kind of tried to uh, make a small patchwork of what happened that year. Uh, so just, just as, a, as a small reminder to, to set the time frame, this is what, what, what the world looked like when the STL was invented. So, uh, I think for most people in the room, this will look like old or very old or like super old. Uh, and, and today, the STL is really not uncharted territory anymore. Uh, there is a literal map of it that has been uh, that has been made by uh, by the great Jonathan Bukhara. Uh, there has been countless books uh, written about how to use effectively the STL. Uh, lots of trips and tricks. Lots of uh, lots of good uh, content and, uh, and and material about that. And yet. And yet, you uh, you start a random chat with some people in the video game industry, and you're like, oh, we don't use the STL here. Uh, that quote is from 2019, which is the original year this uh, talk was written, but I assure you it still applies today, uh, the same as it applied two years ago. So hi, uh, the name is Matthew. Uh, I'm a tech lead at Paradox Development Studio. I work of, um, on Hearts of Iron 4. I used to work on Stellaris and before that on Uper Universalis 4. If you have never heard of those games, uh, you should absolutely try them out. They're always, uh, well, not always, but often discounted on Steam. I'm pretty sure Hearts of Iron 4 will have a discount very soon for, uh, for an event. Uh, just a fair warning, uh, it's a time sink, but a good one. So what are we going to talk about it today? We're going to talk about the case against the STL. Why is the video game industry usually so tied to the STL? Uh, we're going to look at some containers in practice and see why we may or may not like them. Uh, we're going to present some alternative. But also, I would like to have a more like uh, general dialogue about performance and maintenance uh, regarding to basically the STL or whatever your uh, project might uh, use as a replacement or an alternative. So what is not about this talk, because we're talking video game industry, I will not bring up allocators, I will not bring up exceptions, and I will not bring up build times. Uh, those necessitate their own talk, uh, which I am only have uh, 90 minutes, and I think this is already enough content for now. So uh, we can have another talk 
about this later, especially for build. Uh, I have this kind of rule that every conference, uh, a year I send the build talk, and then the next year I try to talk about something else. Uh, this is a this is an odd year, uh, quite literally. Uh, so we're not talking about build today. So let's start with number one. Is the STL so bad? What uh, what uh, what what are we talking about here? So the common complaints uh, I have heard or seen uh, on the internet uh, is that the STL is unfamiliar, um, that the STL is not supported on some platform, uh, that the STL is bloated, and that the performance is not even that great. So really like lots of good reasons or similarly good reasons to not use them. Let's try to dig into this a bit. Uh, familiarity is probably the one that uh, rings me uh, the weirdest. Uh, because it's been around for 25 years, you know, as I mentioned before, like uh, all the 1994 uh, pictures, for most people will like remind them of either the good old days or like a, a, a time long past. But in any case, it's not something new. And I think arguing that something that is 25 years old and has 25 years old of views in practice in most uh, of the industry, it's kind of a weird argument to make. Uh, and even if you don't go for exactly the STL, all the concepts that are behind it, that the, the again based on the on 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 Alex uh, Stepanov research, if you look at popular libraries, they will have exactly the same patterns: Boost, Absil, uh, TBB. You, you will see the exact same thing. Uh, and again, as I mentioned before, there is resources everywhere. Uh, so it's kind of odd to argue that it's not familiar, because. Uh, the research behind it is extremely sound. Uh, I keep being recommended this book. I have not read it uh, because it's kind of scaring me because I'm terrible at math, especially abstract math. But uh, it is uh, it is very solid uh, research uh, that a lot of uh, people smarter than me have, uh, have, have studied and confirmed that, yeah, this is a very good way to uh, to decouple like, container and algorithms. And to be fair, I don't think this is what people, uh, this is maybe not the biggest argument I hear, although I still hear it. One small note though, is that especially in the game industry, uh, the average uh, developer age is uh, younger than most other industries. And which means people with less experience, small people fresh out from schools. And I don't know about your school. And actually, I would be very interested if you want to give me some details about that uh, later on uh, in the conference. Uh, I have made lightning talks about it. I think teaching could be better, especially when it comes to C++. My school, for example, uh, taught us C++ as, you know, this, 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 this thing you can do after you've seen Java and C, you can go back to C, but also do classes. So yeah, I was not really taught the STL in school. And maybe this is where uh, some of this um, uh, message came from. And this is maybe where we need to get a bit better. Availability is also, <sighs> I think not really a barrier anymore. Uh, major vendor will offer you a good uh, implementation of DSTL as long as you can access Clang or GCC or MSBC, uh, which are the big three, uh, you should be able to get a decent implementation of DSTL. Sure, uh, there might be bugs, there might be caveats, but uh, like they're fixed, they're fixed. And uh, I think com compilers have, uh, have, have gotten very good at making live updates. Uh, I, I, I do remember that in the past it was sometimes like a bit uh, stressful to upgrade compilers. Uh, nowadays, I don't think this is as much of an issue, uh, especially since they try to keep compatibility between releases and things like that. So my, my big recommendation, if, 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 if what you hear is that, oh, I can't use the STL because it's not available, uh, it's, it's just update your software, uh, especially one, one, big, uh, one big issue, and I can speak from experience, is that if your uh, compiler vendor does not give you a good implementation of DSTL, uh, whoever's making your compiler probably doesn't care about C++ either, and I would be very worried about the quality of the code it generates and how good it can optimize uh, things. Uh, speaking from experience, uh, I used to work with uh, Sun, uh, Sun OS, and Sun OS C++ compiler was really not good at the time. I have not touched it in a couple of years, so I cannot tell you they, they fixed the issues or not. But uh, yeah, I can tell you that yes, the STL they provided was bad, but then again, they didn't really care about C++ that much at the time. So uh, yeah, they, they, they were not efficient anyway. 
which is basically means if your compiler uh, does not have a good STL, it's a telltale sign that you probably have other problem and bigger problems than the fact that you don't have the STL. So yeah, in that case, my suggestion is just 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 find Clang and use it. Just just find Clang or GCC and just and just use it. You'll probably notice other benefits than just getting the SDL. And then there is a question of bloat. Uh, a lot of things sometimes feel unnecessary or unwanted. Uh, and sometimes you look at, especially when you look at the implementation, it might look overcomplicated for what it's trying to achieve. The main complaint I hear a lot of the time is why are iterators on a vector not pointers? Uh, in some in, in in many implementations, why are they wrappers? Uh, and well, here's the thing: uh, the STL is, and I think this is something that's going to come back regularly in this talk. The STL is designed for general purpose usage. Uh, it is not something uh, that is done exactly for one uh, one particular case. It's a, it's a general purpose language, right? Uh, there, there are people who use it from the video game industry to finance, medical software, uh, cars, you name it. So there's a huge uh, like space to cover and they have to fit most of them. So, uh, so in that case, uh, the, sorry, I got distracted by the, by, by the, by the message in a second, but I, I saw I understood what I meant. Cool. Uh, so the STL, uh, yeah, is designed for a general purpose, which means Sometimes they have to take a generalistic approach. And yes, if you have a very specific use case, you might be able to do better. Uh, but still, like the design principle says that a new feature should not be added to the cost. And we usually okay at uh, keeping up with that, but it's not always uh, possible, right? Because you try to have like policy system or traits or whatever to try to say, okay, I will only enable these features if you ask me to. But it's not always feasible. Uh, you can't always like you don't want a vector class, for example, that has like twenty traits uh, in the construct in, in the in the template type just to be able to enable or disable uh, things you need or don't need, like exception support or all allocators or whatever else. Uh, so at some point there is like a trade off that has to be uh, that has to be um, made, basically. <clears throat> uh, and yes, there is usually bloat or what sometimes considered bloat that is actually debug features, stuff that is made to help developers. Uh, and most of those have a toggle somewhere, usually a build flag, um, that will allow you to turn them off. Uh, the, the, the classic thing people will mention is uh, iterator, debug iterators on MSPC. Uh, you can turn them off. Uh, they are still on by default, and it's been an ongoing discussion forever. Should they still be on by default? Uh, but they will help you uh, find uh, out of uh, bound accesses, uh, access to, uh, to to dead containers, uh, comparison between iterators that do not refer to the same uh, containers, uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> and you can remove them. And again, uh, you can have debugs with uh, optimization. It's not impossible. You can use debug iterators while you 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 optimize your code. It is it is absolutely possible. Uh, which brings me to the quest for performance, right? Because especially when we're making games, uh, we run in a time box. Uh, we are all about latency. We are afraid of worst case scenario and, and things like that. Uh, we, we kind of try to hope that there is not going to be like a worst case that is, uh, that is much, much slower than the average case. Uh, so uh, a common wisdom I often heard, especially when I started in the industry, uh, because for, um, for, for details, I am not from the game industry originally. I worked in finance and banking for a lot of time before going to the video game industry. So some of the some of the things that I that, that, that I was told when I turned kind of rang rang weird. Like, oh, you know, the, the wisdom, the wisdom that may seem sensible is that you know, if you want better control over performance, you go for a lower level language because then you have less bloat and you're closer to the machine. And hence, being closer to the machine, you can do more uh, more efficient stuff. Uh, so, uh, of course, when you look at the STL, it comes with some degree of abstraction, right? You 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 have a vector. It's it's an abstraction over memory allocation. It's an abstraction over pointers. It's an abstraction about new, delete, realloc, and all the things. Uh, so you will have templates. You have iterators. Um, you can have proxy iterators in some cases. 
So yeah, you um, the, the the promise of uh, zero cost abstraction that, that C plus uh, keeps bringing needs some uh, needs a good optimizer, uh, a good compiler to uh, to make sure that this this is delivered even with uh, abstraction uh, in the way. Um, and to uh, give you a, an, an example, I made a very simple benchmark on the on Quick Bench. <clears throat> So uh, this is just a function that is supposed to do an accumulate, uh, stud accumulate, or the equivalent of a stud accumulate if I had to write it manually, like in something that looks more like C. Not entirely C, because C, there is a scary uh, auto here, but like closer to C. Basically, we generate like 10,000 values. Uh, there is like a random uh, Merson twister somewhere here. Uh, and then we, we go for like a very C-like approach. We take a pointer to the start, we take a size. And then we do the good old uh, row, row for loop to uh, from uh, from i to z to to size. We just sum the thing, and uh, and then we just tell the we just tell the um, the benchmark tool to not optimize it. And uh, then we try to compare it with something that is more uh, idiomatic C plus plus slash STL code, which is that instead of doing all of that stuff, we just do start accumulate and uh, we consider it done. And yes. If you run this into uh, into Quick Bench, you will uh, get something like uh, four times faster uh, in uh, in debug. Uh, if you um, if you if if if, if you if, if you try on Clang and uh, and, and uh, lib C plus plus, if you try on Clang with lib stud C plus plus, you will get something a bit better. Uh, it's interestingly, uh, Clang's own library is, uh, is 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 not as fast in debug as uh, as GCC's one. So I'm assuming that it's because the trade-off that is uh, they, they, they considered are a bit different there, but we are still uh, around the same ID, right? You are four times slower if you do not optimize from uh, from this uh, from from this one to this one, which really uh, gets back to, uh, to 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 one of the hot takes you can see on the internet, which is like, oh, I will not use C because C++ is just too bad without optimization, which looks like a an interesting argument to make, um, not one that can be easily debunked, but let's go back to 1994 again. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, remember the 486. Uh, I had one. I don't think it was a DX4. I think it was a DX2, uh, 66 megahertz or something like that. Uh, my dad got it from, uh, from his, his work. He was like working at an IT support company. Um, and do you know what's the funny thing about the, uh, the, the 486? Well, first of all, it was released in 1994, same year of DSTL, so that, that kind of fits this, uh, this talk nicely. But there is enough, another interesting thing about, the, about this, uh, this CPU, is that it's the last one uh, to run instruction sequential, sequentially. Back in 94, Intel realized if you want to go faster, you're going to have to be, uh, you're going to have to be smarter than just read an instruction, decode it, execute it, uh, retire it, and then uh, repeat. It's just not efficient enough, and pumping more megahertz is not gonna, is, 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 uh, is gonna yield diminishing returns. Uh, and so that's where we started uh, introducing out of order e execution, which if you're not familiar at all with CPU designs, uh, it's basically consider the idea that your uh, very sequential assembly code is actually an abstraction in itself, uh, there is like an abstract. There is a translation layer on your CPU that will take this instruction, read several of them ahead of time, try to run them in parallel, and then uh, when uh, when they're actually done executing, uh, affect uh, like affect visible states in a way that you would believe that they had executed uh, in order. Uh, and that is actually interesting because it also means that. If you write like very uh, naive uh, assembly code uh, today, uh, like instruction by instruction, without trying to take uh, concerns about the fact that the, 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 the x86 assembly model is actually kind of lying to you and not really representative of how your CPU works anymore, how, how badly does that does that does that affect you? And here is an interesting benchmark I did. So. What I did here is that I took the accumulate uh, the accumulate benchmark I had, uh, and I just through some uh, interesting trickery, let's just say, of um, of pragmas and a bunch of other things, I managed to uh, compile the same function uh, four times, five times uh, here, 
here, here, here, and here. And uh, for a comparison, I also put the STL market. And as you can see, it is not so much about are you using row pointers when you write it and a for and a rule for loop, or is, are you using an algorithm, or are you using a container and iterators, or are you using pointers? No, what matters is do you enable any kind of optimization whatsoever? Because, and I think this is the fallacy that I would like to highlight here. You might think that by doing a row for loop, you're actually very much closer to the machine, and what you do is going to yield better performance. But the truth is. Your CPU is much more complex than what uh, the assembly model uh, uh, make it look like. And anything as naive as a very, very simple loop, we just uh, translated raw into assembly without any kind of optimization or consideration for the target machine. It's just going to be slow. Like you can see here, right? Like uh, as long as you at least in, uh, activate OG, and OG is like put the minimum amount of optimization possible. Uh, while keeping everything debug related available. So yeah, we do not remove like uh, news variables, uh, do not pad structures, very, very minimal stick style of instruction. You already get like an insane speed up. And again, the, the, main, the main reason behind that is that uh, C is actually not, like we used to say that C is just portable assembly. And it's true if your machine is like a PDP 11 or a 486 then yes, C is actually a reasonably close abstraction to, uh, to what the actual machine is operating on. But on a modern CPU uh, with instruction reordering, uh, CMD, and a lot of things like that, it is actually not a good abstraction. The, 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 if you write C line by line and you do not tell the optimizer to just take what you are and say, no, translate this, uh, translate this 1970s uh, code into 2020 uh, code, you will not get good performance out of your CPU at all. And as you can see here, it doesn't really matter if you use a DSTL or not. Uh, you will you can even get better performance of DSTL one because I think the compiler is able to see more things uh, through, through DSTL than it is through uh, through row pointers. <clears throat> like yeah, basically as long as you put O1 or OG, you get something. Uh, the bump you see here in O3 is that O3 enables uh, CMD vectorization and instructions. Uh, up until that, there is no, it's not even about like using SSC or anything uh, fan fancy like that. It's just about take that very stupid code that was made with a with a with a 1970 CPU in mind and write it down so that my modern uh, i uh, i7 or whatever you're using uh, can can actually. Uh, crunch through it without taking bottlenecks from whatever uh, very specific machine things uh, are behind. And the only one who can actually know to do that efficiently is uh, your compiler. Or maybe like a very, very uh, highly paid engineer at Intel or something like that. But, but, but your average programmer, as you can see, if, if, if you think you're going to uh, make something smart, you're probably going to be wrong. Uh, <clears throat> I redid this benchmark more recently for another talk that I will not do it here. I know it looks super scary, but the big idea is uh, I did the same thing, but uh, I did a much larger combination of build flags just to see the difference. Uh, the blue is the C style one with, uh, with the, with the row uh, loops and the pointers. The CPP one is the CPP style one with the iterators, the containers, and the algorithm. And as you can see, the CPP one is slower as long as you don't enable inlining. And then the moment you start doing inlining, it starts going super faster. Uh, and that is the big thing. You need, you need some measure of optimization and then it doesn't really matter. I also felt like this benchmark was not as uh, good as, I, uh, as it could be. So I uh, made a second one uh, that I can talk about after the talk. But basically, to give you another idea, uh, it's based on a Pathfinder use case that I, that I use at work. So it's uh, it's it's more of a real life uh, use case, and you will see uh, an even more uh, uh, reasonable, uh, an even more like realistic uh, thing, which is that as long as you have at least some measure of inlining, the code generated by the compiler is uh, is just more efficient than the row C uh, all all around the the line. So. Basically, what I wanted to take away from that part is that, like, yes, C++ abstraction are uh, slower than, 
than, than raw C if you do not enable any optimization whatsoever. But it doesn't matter, or it doesn't matter as much as you think, because in actuality, both your C and your uh, C style or your C++ style code are actually extremely slow uh, compared to what they could be if you just would enable any optimization whatsoever. Uh, so uh, I think we should shift the debate from should I use like abstractions or no abstraction when it comes to either doing row temp or uh, like row, row pointers or use some uh, like templates and iterators and more to uh, like what what kind of build flag and optimization can you enable on your project even when you want to debug? Because one of them does not require you to rewrite your whole code uh, to, to rewrite your entire code, and it also does not affect readability. It's all about like your tool chain settings. Uh, the alternative is to rewrite your old C plus plus code on C, and it turns out this is not even the biggest gain you can have. Uh, most vendor will give you like a decent support for optimizing your builds. There might be room for improvements. Uh, I have been using mostly um, uh, Visual Studio for my work, and I have noticed a few places where yes, I, I could get better uh, results. For example, uh, the OG setting on uh, on, uh, on 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 GCC is just marvelous in terms of what it, what you gain for 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 for, uh, for 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 enabling it. Microsoft does not have an, uh, an optimization flag like optimize for debug that is as good or as finely grained. I wish there was one. I hope there will be one one day. Uh, but yeah, I, I said I would not talk more about building this talk, so I will just stay there. And what I want to say is know your build flags because they're actually probably more important than uh, using pointers or iterators. That being said, even with the debate aside, we still need to talk about those containers and uh, how good they are. Because I think we can all agree, at least for the rest of this talk, that the problem is not really writing like row pointers versus C++ iterator style, and more about what does the container actually do? Like what's the, what's the, what's the algorithm uh, that is actually used behind you? What's the data structure, that kind of thing. And that's where the, the second part of this talk comes from. So, um, in this part, we'll talk about we'll talk about the most commonly used containers. Uh, so we'll go for arrays and dynamic arrays. We'll talk about associative uh, containers, ordered and unordered, which is basically hash tables. I will not talk about lists because I think nobody should be using lists. There is a very, 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 very narrow uh, space for usage case where lists are actually still efficient. Uh, that's going to go, like, if you start doing queues and uh, and other things like that, like, log, if you want to go log free and, and, and other cases like that. But for 99% of your cases, or even maybe 99.9%, uh, list is probably not what you want. You probably want to want one of those. So let's talk about vector first. Vector is probably the one everybody knows and the one everybody recommends. It's just heap allocated array that you can resize. It's the go-to container of DSTL, uh, like, if you don't want to think, use a vector. It's cheap to move because you're basically just carrying a pointer around. And it is, it's also very cheap to do random access because you're just doing an offset plus, uh, plus a base address. And there you go. Uh, and it is as fast as it gets for iterating. Uh, and why, why is that? Uh, if you have never heard about uh, or don't know, if you're not familiar with the ideas of caching, uh, ITR made a very good. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, article about this. I think it's from, uh, it starts to be a bit old now, but the, the row figures are still the same ID, which is uh, give you an idea of how fast can a CPU uh, process some kind of instruction. And if you look at the highlighted part, uh, the CPU is even able to uh, add or uh, do some like very uh, simple uh, additional bitwise operation between registers in less than a cycle. I don't even know how that's possible. But yeah, they managed to uh, do some stuff in less than a cycle. But then, if the data you're trying to read is uh, <clears throat> is not in a register, but in the in the L1 cache of your uh, of your CPU, you're gonna take three to four cycles. Uh, if it's not uh, if it's not in the L1 and you have to go all the way to the L2, it's ten to twelve cycles. If it's not in the uh, if it's not in the uh, if you have to go to the L3, you're gonna get thirty to seventy and if you have to go all the way to main RAM, it's going to be 100 to 150. 
basically, it's two order of magnitude slower to uh, access data that is not in the cache versus something that is either very close on the cache or in a register. And that's the main thing you should uh, remember if you want to think about caching for one second. And this is why vector is fast. Because CPUs are extremely efficient at reading sequential data because they prefetch, uh, they, they, they basically prefetch memory based on the on your access pattern. So if you're reading from zero to n uh, in in in, a, in 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 any kind of array buffer, uh, as as you go, the CPU in the back will start prefetching uh, the memory pages that you need. Which means you all you're mostly always going to fall into the L1 uh, use case, which is as we say, like at least 50 times faster than if you were uh, accessing a random address that is not cached. Uh, it's also able to do it if you go in reverse. There is a bunch of things it's capable to do, but it's mostly like CPUs are very good at crunching numbers that come sequentially in memory, and they're kind of bad at everything else. That's why vector is so good. Uh, so that is also why sometimes uh, you can have an, uh, an, uh, an operation that is supposed to be linear time. Uh, on a vector, but that turns out to be faster than a log n operation on another container. And it's because if your log n operation actually needs to jump around in memory, uh, the, the, the times 100 factor of, uh, of reading memory, uh, of, of, of missing a cache and needing to go to main memory, you will actually lose it. And if you want a rule of a thumb, it's basically if you go for a small set, and when I say a small set, something around 100, maybe 500 elements, uh, you will still be faster by doing a brute force search uh, through the array than trying to do a dichotomy with a, with a map, for example. So basically, if you want to do um, a read intensive associative set, uh, you can try to do a solid vector, uh, for a, and then you do, you do like a binary search. Uh, and if you need to uh, keep references to items in a in a in a in, in a vector, uh, prefer prefer indexes to pointers or iterators because, uh, as as you know, uh, if you push back some elements in a vector, it might actually need to be allocated and move the whole thing, so your pointer will be invalidated, whereas your index will stay uh, will stay strong all the time. Speaking of a uh, vector, what is what is the limitation of vector? Is there any limitation? I don't think there is. Like mostly not. Like vector is great. I I, I haven't heard many people uh, make an argument that vector is bad and we should replace it or use something else. Like if there is one container that I think even the video game industry can agree that is good and that we should use and that uh, and that has mostly no uh, no reason to complain about, it's vector. It is great. Uh, if you really start looking, you can start seeing some limitations. Um, some people argue about the growth factor, which is how much more uh, memory do you allocate every time you have to resize. Uh, you cannot configure it, and it is not specified by the standard, so it's completely up to your implementation to, uh, to, uh, to decide if it's going to be 1.5 or 2, which is the two common ones. For example, I think MSVC is using 1.5. And uh, GCC and Clang are using two, uh, which means depending on platforms, you may have a growth pattern of your reallocation that is a bit different. And in some cases, that is really something that you don't want to observe. Uh, which one of the two is best? There is a lot of uh, debate online with that and some math. I still don't think that uh, there is an ideal answer, at least that I can give you today. Uh, also, the, the way the standard is worded uh, means the uh, vector cannot do small buffer optimization, uh, which is when, uh, for very small sizes, your vector comes with an embedded buffer. Uh, and so it doesn't have to go through a heap allocation if you want to store less than, I don't know, say 10 members or, uh, or 20 elements, something like that. Uh, internally, I know a lot of big projects have something similar. Uh, in which the in, in which the vector actually carries like a small buffer with it because they know that in most cases what they will actually uh, have is like up to five elements. So if you can save a heap allocation on that, you actually it's actually a, good, a very good win. But as the way the standard is worded, you cannot uh, you cannot do that uh, because. Um, because a uh, stat vector mandates that if you uh, move a vector to another vector, uh, the iterators are still valid. 
uh, because again, you, the only thing you've done is just uh, move, uh, move pointers around. You haven't moved any memory. If you're using small buffer optimization, you will actually physically have to move the bits on move operations, which uh, is not compatible with the standard. Uh, and also vector of bool is kind of a mess um, because it's basically not a vector. It's a bit set, but, but it's hidden behind a template specialization and it's kind of a very uh, classic uh, newbie trap. Uh, let's talk about the other kind of uh, arrays we use, which is stud array, uh, which is just a fixed size uh, stack allocated array that has come up with a C11. Uh, it has everything else we like from, a, from an array, it has still a one random access cache friendly, everything you want. Uh, only caveat with, uh, with array that sometimes people miss is that it actually could be as expensive to move than to copy because again you cannot move uh, something that is uh, that, uh, that, that contains its own buffer. You have to copy the bit somewhere else. So uh, um, a trick I have actually observed sometime in, uh, in codes uh, with, from junior programmers, which is they do a stud move on an array saying, "See, it's it's actually going to be cheap because I'm moving around." It's like no, move move on an array is as expensive as a copy, and that is that is kind of a trick uh, that you may not see. But other than that, it's basically uh, your old-fashioned C array, but better. Like I do not see any reason to use a C array when since stud array exists. It is just doing more things. Now, if you want to look at alternatives, what do we have? Uh, small buffer optimization is probably the first one I mentioned. We kind of would like to have one. Uh, Boost is one. It's called small vector. Uh, Facebook is one, which is called small vector. Uh, Google is one which is called inline vector. Uh, the naming is not entirely uh, consistent here, but it's the same ID. Uh, and basically, again, it's the, it's the simple ID that for small sizes, you will have a heap allocation. Uh, I know inside Clang, for example, they use that for uh, every time they have to pass like a small collection of arguments or something like that. Uh, because most uh, in most cases, you have like three, four, uh, four elements in it maximum. And so you can save a lot by not doing micro allocation because heap allocation is a bit costly, especially if you do it for a small size, especially if you do it on a lot of small objects. And this is where you can do a good save. Again, you come back with the drawback that if you move, uh, you'll uh, invalidate your iterator and you might still be ON, which ON is probably not a big deal here because our uh, the, 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 the small buffer is by, 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 by its name small. So you're gonna you're gonna copy like I don't know ten objects maybe, which is not that bad. Uh, when it comes to stud array, uh, the big issues that I have not observed and that other people have observed that it's fixed size but not fixed capacity, uh, which is not suitable for dynamic insertion. And in some cases, we would like to say, hey, I have this thing. It's an array. It cannot grow past like 20 elements, but I do not have 20 elements to insert when I construct it. Uh, and uh, we have a few alternatives to solve that. Uh, fixed capacity vector is probably the thing people think about when they when they mention a limitation of on array. Uh, boost is one called static vector. Uh, EA STL has one called fixed vector, and uh, Facebook Foley has one called uh, small vector. Uh, not two of them can agree on the name, sadly. There has been a proposition to the standard uh, to add it. I think it hasn't been moving since I wrote this talk two years ago. I am not sure what the standard is today. Uh, the working progress name would be stud static vector, but I think it's still in discussion. I don't think the original offer is, uh, has, uh, has, has worked on it recently. And with that said, we can move to uh, associative containers. So, <clears throat> uh, map and set are the classic sorted associative containers. Uh, you have uh, logarithmic time on access, insertion in arrays. And the biggest feature people like about it is that if you insert an array stuff, you do not invalidate iterators to uh, previous elements. So if you have iterators or even pointers to the previous elements, you're guaranteed that they're still valid and they're uh, after you insert more elements. Uh, and it's also uh, O1 to move uh, because again, we're just moving pointers in memory. Um, the issue comes that to implement that uh, following the standard, you most 
top of the time will go for an R, a red black tree, because this is basically what you do. And the problem with red black trees, or basically any tree really, uh, or most trees, is that they're not cache friendly uh, because it's uh, it's a bunch of nodes in memory. They're not contiguous. They're just allocated at different time. They can end up very, 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 very widely spaced into uh, in, into the into your data segments. Uh, and the lookup type is logarithmic and not constant. We can do better with hash tables, for example. So uh, usually you will hear something like that from the same guy who's going to be like, oh, STL map and set have terrible performance. Don't use them. Uh, can we do better? The answer is not really. Not with the actual constraints of map. Like the way it's worded, it is very hard to make something different than a red black tree and red black trees and other kind of binary trees come with the uh, drawback that uh, memory will not be contiguous and uh, and 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 and, uh, and and that you will have uh, you will have like a data completely spread out in memory which is not good for for for, for performance uh, also it has to be sorted which means we cannot use a hash table but if we drop some of those constraints then maybe we can do better so uh, let's start by dropping the sorting requirements and then we start getting uh, an ordered map and an ordered set which can do a hash table because if we don't need to sort stuff, then yeah, we can make a hash. And now we start getting constant time on insertion, erasure, and a uh, lookup. But still, the same guy comes back to me and says, no, 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 an ordered map and an ordered set of just not using open addressing. And if you're not using open addressing in 2019 or 2021, what are you doing even? Like, no, don't use that. Uh, for those who don't know about open addressing, it's a, it's a way to uh, guarantee that all the data inside your hash table is actually in a, basically the vector, uh, which is not the way an ordered map and an ordered set are going to be implemented on your, uh, on your STL. Uh, it's going be uh, it's going to be a vector of buckets and buckets have a, have a list element inside. So it's not super cache friendly which is the, 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 the issue. And that, yeah, if you do open addressing hash table, you can have better cache performance. Again, you cannot do it uh, with, the, with, the, with the requirement of set by the standard on another map and another set. It is not that the URSTL implementer uh, is, 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 is bad at C++, it is that he cannot use open addressing. Uh, there's two reasons why. Uh, one is that open addressing has a higher uh, space-time trade-off than uh, than an ordered map and an ordered set, uh, which uh, we uh, uh, and, and and basically bucket lists. There is uh, there is I think a line in the standard that says that you cannot uh, like for a for for a hash table you the the the, the occupation factor the, the the occupation factor the number of uh, buckets are uh, in use versus the number of unused buckets should not go over a certain size. Uh, for uh, open addressing to be efficient, that number needs to be bigger. You need basically more empty buckets around to keep uh, to keep uh, getting the benefits. So that's a trade-off that the standard cannot allow you to make. And the other one is that uh, the standard says that if you do not rehash, uh, because you're basically growing the hash table, if you're just inserting or removing elements, you cannot invalidate reference trees to other elements. And that is not what open addressing is usually doing. It actually moves items around uh, that are not the ones you're inserting or removing. So again, we cannot implement that with the current standard. Uh, but here's the thing I discovered while researching for this talk, is that the main reason uh, an ordered map and an ordered set are slow, it's not that we're not using uh, open uh, addressing. It is actually an implementation issue. It is the problem is, at least on Clang and on GCC, is that they use modulo uh, modulo operations to uh, to find which uh, which bucket your, uh, your 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 hash item uh, should fall in, and it turns out doing modulos on modern even on modern CPUs is slow as hell, and is the main bottleneck of most of an map and another set implementation. Uh, this is not a discovery I made. Uh, this is a discovery that was presented in uh, 2018 at CPP now by Malte Skalupke, okay. uh, which is that. The biggest issue, as you can see in these tables, uh, is that using a modulo slows down lookups a lot when you start getting to a, to a big size. And Microsoft, which is the, the incomeware uh, in this um, in, in this in these slides, 
uh, actually has made uh, the small thing of not using modulo, which is why on MSVC, your unordered map and unordered set will not have this like uh, skyrocket performance head that you can see on uh, that you can see on uh, on Clang and on the GCC. Uh, if you want to know more about like what what's the best way to use an unordered map or an unordered set, I really recommend this talk. I have uh, I have a link at the end of the slides. Uh, it's a very interesting exploration on how an ordered map and an ordered set are made and what is efficient, what is not efficient, and how big uh, how big does the how big the, the difference can be. Actually, one last point uh, before I go to the next part. Remember the numbers there, because uh, depending uh, depending on on your application, uh, you may or may not uh, care as much about how how bad the uh, the growth is here. Because as you can see, it only starts when you start going into basically hundreds of thousands. So, uh, for example, you will look at people who you who, who usually complain about that. And it's either like uh, it's going to be a system with a lot of entries. Like it, it, it's no, uh, it's it's no uh, surprise that a lot of this research has come from Google, uh, because Google and Facebook, for example, they have insanely big databases that they have to do lookup into. Uh, so I guess a, a question to ask yourself before you start looking: Oh, maybe I need a replacement for another map in another set. Is like how big is your map or your set? Uh, because in many places I've actually worked on. You 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 do not break hundred thousand elements. You you probably are around hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands. And until you start getting very really further than this, uh, you might still be able to be okay with uh, with an ordered map or an ordered set. Uh, it comes back to knowing your data and how big you go. So maybe this is my warning when you start looking at those uh, blog posts and papers where people show like crazy, uh, crazy benefits uh, and, 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 and numbers is that remember the order of magnitude and, 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 and try to compare that to what your application actually has uh, internally. For example, in my games, we don't really have a lot of places when there is hundreds of thousands of elements. Uh, tens of thousands, yes. Hundreds of thousands, I can't think of one in the top of my head. I think you might be have a hundred. I'm not even sure you can have a hundred. Yeah, maybe one, maybe one in Stellaris. Uh, but most games, we don't have hundreds of thousands, ten thousands maybe. Uh, which leads me to the last bit of this talk, which is what's 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 the takeaway you should uh, you should get from this. So. Uh, the thing that uh, entirely started this talk is basically a tweet that roughly like this. Uh, it comes out every season. Uh, there's usually one in the winter and one in the summer. I'm, I'm joking, but not entirely. Uh, some guy in the video game industry uh, will just make a, something like basically paraphrasing this tweet. Like, oh, C++ suck, why is the community so incompetent? And then like a long run that uh, whatever STL uh, thing he tried to use is just too slow. Uh, so this is kind of a cop out, but you have to keep in mind that the committee does not uh, implement your SDL. Uh, the C++ committee will make specification, and sometimes the specification will have uh, strong implementation concerns, but usually those are get raised while the paper is being written by the actual implementers because they're part of this decision group. <laughs> And also, uh, as I think someone mentioned in the comment already, C++ is a general purpose language, right? Like the default have to be same for the 99%. So yes, maybe your project does not need uh, a guarantee that uh, members are ordered in the map or guarantees that uh, if you insert or remove an element, uh, the other iterators are not valid, are not invalidated. But it's not a concern for everybody. And some people may think that this is not a good, standard, a good default. And again, um, if you see someone ranting on social media uh, about this, like reminder, this is not a good way to get your point across. Uh, the first thing I have noticed a lot is that a lot of the a lot a bunch of uh, of uh, of complaints or uh, or hot takes on the on, on the efficiency of DSTL. Uh, or actually either exaggerated or based on very old data. Uh, for example, I've seen a lot of people saying that the STL is terrible on SVC. Uh, and when you ask them in detail, they remember that one time with Visual Studio 2005 uh, had a bug. Uh, 
Uh, so what I'm saying is that there's a burden of proof there. Like I, I recognize that there are some things in the STL that you can do better, that is possible to do better. But I also realize that they're widely used and they're widely tested. Like you need to have a feature and a performance test to justify an alternative. Uh, and you need to revisit it from time to time if you decide to make one. Because maybe it's true. Maybe today your implementation of uh, of, a, of a dynamic array or a hash map or a, or a map is not efficient. But will it be the case in five years? Will it be the case in two years? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the compilers are just updating faster and faster these days. I remember, like, we used to have like, a big update of Visual Studio every couple of years. And now we have like more of a live update style uh, compiler uh, setting, and I think uh, GCC and Clang will also like increase the pace of uh, of, of, of upgrades and, uh, and and patches. So maybe you have a good reason today. Keep it around. Keep a test that shows why you actually had to do it, because there is a good chance that in five or ten years that assertion will not be true anymore. Uh, also remember again that the standard has to make a good enough assumption. Uh, it cannot make something unsafe. So usually they will favor reference stability and not go too far memory overhead. Uh, because again, we, we, we target the most common use case. So yes, if you have a specific uh, use case, you might be able to do something better. Uh, the corollary, which I have, uh, that, that you should also remember, is that a fit to propose alternative is a bad default. So uh, going around and asking uh, people to uh, replace stud map or northern map by uh, by your default because it is faster uh, needs to be uh, strongly considered. Right? Uh, for example, fixing the modulo issue performance, yes. Replacing it with uh, open addressing, maybe not. And uh, remember the world of the knuff. Uh, we said uh, in a very famous quote, uh, the problem is that programmers have spent far too much time worrying about efficiency in the wrong places and at the wrong times. Uh, efficiency is an issue and it is something we do, but most of the time when I had to fix a performance issue, it did not boil down to a container. Uh, there has been a few places where, yes, replacing uh, an ordered map by a drop-in replacement that I had saved me a bunch. But most of the time, it's because the wrong container was used or the wrong algorithm was used. Uh, a classic would be you, you're doing like a linear uh, search when you could be doing like a dichotomy or a, or, or a hash is, is the classic case. Um, and also, uh, I want to I wanna remind you of the, of the cost of maintaining a dropping replacement. Uh, in order of cost, uh, the best code is no code because it doesn't cost you anything to maintain. Uh, the second best is the one that ships with your compiler. Because again, it ships with your compiler. It is basically painless to, 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 to get. And if you want a new one, you just update your compiler and you're done. Uh, the third one will be a third party library. Uh, it's going to be a bit more maintenance. Uh, you will have to update it from time to time. You start getting into package management, which is one of my favorite topics, but also a complex topic. And I know that the C++ community still is not entirely ready for it. So there is a cost there. And then finally, you have an in-house library, which is definitely the most costly of the four, by far. Uh, because turns out writing a generic container is actually hard. It might look easy at first. Uh, a, a classic thing I have, uh, I, I, I have noticed in, in my career is people think like, oh, this, this, this thing is dumb. I can rewrite a better one in a weekend. And for your generic, for, for your very like slideware use case, it's probably true. You can probably do something better. But then, then you will start having cases where someone tries to do perfect forwarding, or you want const expert, or uh, do you optimize properly with trivial types, uh, which basically can use mem copy instead of doing like a copy construction uh, and, uh, and and other things like that. And uh, and then the standards comes and adds another feature to the language that you probably should support. And I have worked a lot of time with uh, code bases where you have a dropping replacement for a uh, vector, map, or whatever you name it. Uh, and then you try to use it, and it either does not support constexpr or it does not support uh, something will be missing somewhere, basically, is, is, is what I'm getting at. 
So I think you have to be tactical if you want to uh, use a replacement. Consider how many people your company uh, can spare uh, on a drop-in replacement. Like, sure, if you're Google or if you're like a huge company that has like, I don't know, hundreds of people uh, dedicated to doing like a low-level engine stuff, you can probably do it. But the smaller your team gets, uh, the less time you will have to actually keep that thing in line compared to uh, just upgrading your compiler from time to time. So pick your battles. Like better hash map, yes, you can probably find something good. Uh, rewrite variant optional, no, don't don't do it. Don't even try. Uh, I think like if 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 I replace my uh, my company uh, uh, interview test uh, by implement me optional, I don't think I would hire anybody. Uh, because it turns out something as, as trivial looking as optional has a lot of corner cases that you can get wrong. So yeah, pick your battles. Uh, and also remember when engaging with your peers, uh, ranting on Twitter does not make C++ better by any uh, observable uh, metric. Uh, talking at a conference that is uh, only uh, video game programmers also doesn't help uh, because the committee is not really, uh, people or members of the C++ committee are often not there. Uh, so like, if you find something that you wanna, you wanna talk uh, people, uh, bring to people, uh, go where the community is, which I think we are all at the CCU today, so we're already in a good place. And this is probably more a message for the people you uh, you talk, uh, and then your colleagues, friends, people you meet, uh, meetup, conference, ISO study group. This is the this is where you you bring up uh, you bring up the fact that you would need a better container. Uh, you also could go to your uh, compiler implementer to uh, to tell them about an issue. Uh, it's 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 better if people collaborate. We make much more faster progress, and that's that's why, for example, I could uh, look at the Maltz work on a on on an order map and uh, and get some some better results. And again, the bigger the sample, the better the results, right? Uh, so don't be afraid of talking to C plus plus developer outside of your field, uh, because I know uh, some industries, especially the video game industry, are, have usually tendency to only talk to each other. And on some topics, we're really ahead, and on some topics, we're really behind. So, and I, I've seen that in several places in my career. Uh, do not be afraid of grabbing someone who is not in your field and figure out how they're doing stuff, because they probably know a thing or two that you don't. So, uh, also, finally, do not forget to change your uh, like change your vendor uh, if you have to, uh, if your quality of implementation uh, isn't good. For example, I think. Uh, Clang and GCC uh, could use a challenge about the, the usage of Modulo. I uh, don't think Maltese talk actually made them change, uh, but I couldn't be 100%. Again, I'm mostly working with Windows these days. And if you find something, publish it. Like, I know that not all companies uh, allow you to publish code and everything, but just, just make a blog post. Maybe you can't copy paste your code, but at least explain, hey, we had this issue with this uh, with this uh, with this with this container, or we we found a better one. Publish it, make a blog post about it, and use reusable benchmarks. Because it's, I think, one of the main issues that we have is that a lot of people talk from the gut feeling, or they talk about uh, their one case, or they have like a very slightware uh, thing that is actually demonstrating an issue. But what we're lacking a bunch a bit more to actually figure out which implementation is better is real life uh, reusable benchmarks that we can uh, that we can uh, that we can use i think uh, i think your implementers would make a lot of progress in the quality of implementation of uh, the containers if they had a bunch of benchmarks they can use in and 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 uh, and, uh, and, and compare as metrics if you want a comparison think about uh, what the acid test did for uh, javascript implementation in browsers in the 2000s i don't know if you ever worked in web but back in the 2000s, we had this thing called the ACID test. Uh, that was, I think it was CSS actually, not JavaScript, uh, which was like a, a very simple uh, page you open and it tells you how, how good or bad your browser is at uh, doing things. And that challenged people and that challenged uh, browsers. And that's how we got like uh, out of, of the wide west that was uh, that, that was like uh, browser specific uh, behaviors uh, in, in, in the late 90s, early 2000s. We got like much more conforming, uh, um, implementations, and that's why you can open basically any web page on any browser today with a very, very little hacking from the maintainers on how to, do, to behave on different uh, on different platforms. And that's the same thing we could use here. 
if there was like an acid test of DSTL that uh, everybody at Microsoft and GCC and Clang could use, they would probably uh, stop trying to see if we can do better. Or if you need help packaging, you can ask me, by the way. I, 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 I do package management on the side. I can give you some tips if you, if you need help on that stuff. In conclusion, uh, so the STL will try to offer you a good enough default. Uh, remember that some optimization are required. But again, it's not only for uh, STL and suddenly for C++. It's in general, if you're doing C or C++ and you want any measure of performance, you have to enable at least some optimization. In some specific cases, you can make a better uh, alternatives. Uh, alternative. There is a few suggestions I have made, and uh, I think a few of them could use to uh, could 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 have a use even in the standard. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, feedback is needed to improve the experience of all C plus plus developers. So, if you figure out something is missing and you want it. For example, this there's, I mentioned the paper that was uh, that, that was that were lying down uh, about small vector somewhere. Helping uh, those people getting the paper through would probably help everybody getting a, an out of the box uh, small vector or other things uh, in the compiler. And furthermore, I think your build should be destroyed. Thank you. And I will now look at the questions if there are any. Oh, they are, they're coming. I'll let a matter for them to sell. Uh, you can plus questions if you want. Okay, oh, ooh, wow. Okay, the first one has a lot of votes. So the question is, uh, do you actually use the STL in your games and how? Uh, it varies widely from game to game uh, and uh, places to places. Um, all of our games up until uh, the last two we released or you all have a branched off uh, implementation of the engine and the new ones are trying to keep track of, uh, of the head. But the previous one, I fought the engines. So uh, on the projects I have worked on, I have usually... I, I'm definitely on the side of use the STL if you can, unless you have a good reason to, uh, because uh, because sometimes it's just a, a simple thing. So I think the short answer is yes and no, which is not a good answer. A uh, more dedicated answer is depending on the project and the history of it, uh, there is some usage in some places. Uh, we had a container, for example, that was a wrapper uh, around a vector. I, in most places, it has been removed. Uh, we have been seeing two replacements. One of them is another implementation that is just a re-implemented vector. The other one is just stud vector, and I just don't hide the name behind it. Uh, it's hard to change everything from an existing code base, right? So uh, most of the time, we are still running on some uh, histor historical container. But the argument I keep pushing for is to only use it when it makes sense. I personally would do it for like having a small vector and probably for a better and older map. Uh, I would not use it for vector. I would not use it for string. I would definitely not use it for optional and, uh, and variant. Uh, and then it's kind of up from each game. How do we want to do it? Uh, as a tech lead, I encourage, uh, my, my, I encourage people uh, to, to try to see if they can use uh, something out of the box when possible. Next question. Could you talk a bit about why STL containers should be only used internally and not in APIs? Uh, why? Uh, okay. Why should STL containers not be used inter only be used internally? I don't think they sh should. Uh, I, I, I get I get where you're coming from. Uh, if people have their own set of uh, containers, uh, then they will uh, be uh, unwilling to use your API if it's using. Uh, if it's using specific containers, because they might need to do like a copy or a translation layer, and that's kind of uh, the kind of glue you don't want to bother writing. Uh, on one hand, there is a solution to that. It's called iterators. Uh, a lot of the reason why uh, we have uh, iterators is to not tie an existing algorithm to a specific uh, container. So uh, for example, if you're supposed to take a collection, consider taking a range or any similar thing instead. 
Uh, and if I need strings, I guess string view would also be an option. Uh, that, that would be my two main uh, concerns there. Uh, but honestly, I would not hide it behind the CA. Like I, I, the alternative is usually hide it behind the C API with uh, with uh, pointers and void stars or, or, or other ugly things like that, and I really don't like it. Uh, so I would try to use some kind of C++ facet and also some kind of container slash iterator facet. So I will try to go for iterators, and then I will try to go for view like uh, containers from the STL if possible. So that would be range, uh, that would be range uh, starting with twenty, and before that, like string views in seventeen. And if not, just iterator pairs. Uh, this one is done. This one is done. Next question. Uh, would you consider adding a steady string and the SSO to your talk in the future? Uh, I could. Uh, I could. When I made this talk, I already thought I was talking too much, but, but it's, it turns out that ACCU gives you lots of time. Uh, stuttering has a uh, small string optimization in it. It's, it's, an, it's an implementation of a small buffer. Uh, there is actually, like, if you want a small buffer out of the box, you can cheat because stut string is a template type, uh, basic, basic string. So you could technically use stut string to make a vector with small buffer optimization. It will probably look weird and scare a bunch of people uh, the first time they see like a basic string of uh, business types or whatever. But you can actually do that, and you will get some SSO. The only issue is that I there is less visibility on how big the small buffer is, uh, and I think it depends on platform to platform. I know a lot of people who do SSO. They like to have an extra parameter in the template, which is what's the number of uh, elements you keep in the small buffer. But yeah, uh, uh, a life hack you can do if you want small buffer optimization and, and don't want to write it yourself, you use a basic string. Next question. Uh, what do you think of custom allocator PMR to get more performance out of existing containers? Uh, I said I would not mention uh, allocators in this talk. I will stick to it for now. Uh, I. Don't uh, I, I I don't want to delve too much into it. I know that you can get some better results uh, in some places. For example, with map to force the map elements to be uh, to be located in some kind of chunk. Uh, I have not tried it personally. Next question. Uh, you said you are using STL containers. Uh, in my mind, STL or actually the algorithm. Are you using this? Uh, I am definitely using more algorithm than I'm using containers. Uh, and I have, uh, since I joined Paradox a couple of years ago, I have strived to make sure that all the containers we have are compatible with algorithm because it turns out that historically was not the case for all of them. Uh, a few of them were missing either the right iterators or uh, some of the extra things you may need. Uh, but yeah, I am a huge proponent of uh, algorithm. I use them all the time. I keep bothering people in merge requests saying, no, that looks like an any off. That looks like a transform. That looks like a find F. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely for using SEL containers. And there is no reason why your custom containers should not be able to work with, uh, with algorithm. About the slide with an old map and modulus, can you elaborate on why modulo is slow and what are the alternatives or uh, in the other implementation? Yes, uh, I think Maltese talk, which is uh, mentioned here, uh, actually uh, gives you a better detail. But to 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 simplify the idea, hash maps are basically the ideas that you hash or you get you compute a hash for a, for 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 a key, and then you try to find which bucket of your uh, of your uh, of your hash table the uh, the the object should lie. So uh, the classic and naive way of doing it is just doing a modulo of the size. You take the hash. You modulo from the size. Modules are slow, even today, even on modern CPUs, uh, because they're using divides and uh, basically it's using it's using the divider unit of your CPU. The divider is slow, and contrary to a lot of other operation, it cannot be uh, it can uh, the, the CPU is not able to execute several at the same time. It basically blocks everything. 
you can see that of like a huge bottleneck. Like your CPU will just stall until the modulo uh, operation has been computed on the on a specific uh, part of the die, and then everything will resume. It is really really bad. It's, it's we're talking like stalling everything for hundred cycles. Uh, the best way around it, uh, I think Boost and Ordered Map does that, and also like everything that uh, Malte shows in his talk does it too, and Microsoft does it too, is to uh, have a bunch of uh, sizes, uh, size multiples or whatever, uh, basically use bit magic or use static, uh, statically compute divisions. Uh, for uh, for to avoid the modulo, uh, one of the classic thing is uh, one of the one of the things is uh, to to not resize on an arbitrary size, but instead have like a set of sizes that to grow to like from one to from one, not from one, but like I don't know, like let's say from ten to uh, to a million, have like preset size of how much your hash table can grow every time, basically as uh, as steps, and for every step. You can have a context per uh, you can have a context per uh, friendly uh, expression uh, to compute the modulo. If if the compiler knows at compile time what the uh, what the right hand side of the modulo is, it will try to unroll it to avoid using the divider on the CPU. It will do some weird math to do uh, with plus minus bit shift and multiply to uh, to be able to uh, to get to the same result, and and it usually does. It, it, it only gives up at very big sizes. And even then, you can probably find a good one. Uh, and that's usually the trick you do. You only have a specific set of, uh, of sizes, and then the compiler can do the mod it can transform the modulo at compile time to something else. If it has to do a modulo by an arbitrary number, then it has to pull the divider on the CPU, and that is just terrible as well. Next question, how are STL exception affecting performance in the game industry or using exceptions at all? Uh, thinking about STD out of range. Uh, we depend, I think we compile with exceptions on. Uh, exceptions, exceptions are not that bad by, uh, by, by, any, uh, by any margin in my experience. Throwing and catching exceptions is bad, but uh, having exceptions, uh, Possible in the control flow is not. Uh, it used to be, especially Windows 32 bits uh, implementation of try and catch was extremely slow, even if you don't go through it. Like just the fact that you had a catch block would make your code slower because uh, every time you enter or exit uh, a section, uh, the compiler would have like the compiler would insert a bunch of uh, calls to record where you are exactly so that it could unroll the stack properly. Nowadays, uh, it doesn't do that anymore with 64 bits. It's, it's doing much more smarter things. When you have like a lookup table, it can use when an exception is run to figure out exactly what needs to be uh, destructed based on the uh, address. And that saves you a lot of time. Uh, and the out of range thing is only used if you use the checked operation, which is the dot at. And then it's entirely voluntary, right? Like if you want to check, um, if you want to check, if you want to check, if you want a bound check, then you do dot add. And if you don't want it, which most of the time you don't, uh, you can use the square bracket operator, and that one does not do check. Uh, which actually I can segue on, uh, on an extra detail on that. Uh, Microsoft has done a very good job at implementing uh, C++ algorithms uh, so that they only do, but even if you enable all the bounce check in the world, they only do it once because. If you're doing a, if you're doing an, uh, if you're running an algorithm with a begin and end, what it will do is check if begin and end are belonging to the same range, and check if begin and end are actually not uh, going out of bounds. And then it will wrap those iterators to to be done pointers, and then it will roll your loop, which means you do not get a bound check on every iteration. You only do it once at the top. And it's basically it's able to do that because it wraps your algorithm, which is one of the extra reasons why a stub algorithm can be faster in debug than a for loop, because a for loop with a with a vector, for example, uh, in debug will on every uh, on every the reference of uh, the square bracket operator will actually do a bound check, whereas if you use a stud algorithm, it will only do it once at the start of the loop and then be done with it, which is much faster. You mentioned it's the least deck deck performs poorly. What would be a suitable alternative? I haven't worked a lot with deck. I remember that in the early 2000s, every book was saying that vector was dead and you should use deck because it was the future. 
Uh, if, if you look at like early uh, Herb Soler slash uh, Scott Mayer books, uh, there's a lot of praise about deck. And uh, I think back then we thought it would be better than everything else. It's completely fallen out of fashion since. And I basically almost forgot about it entirely. I don't use it that much. Uh, I don't have a lot of, uh, of experience with it. Uh, and I don't know how good it is. What container algorithm uh, would you add to the STL? Uh, algorithm, I don't think I would add an algorithm as much as I want range because the only one I keep wanting is like something like transform if, and every time you go into the transform if rabbit hole, you end up thinking, no, actually what I need is ranges. So basically what I want is ranges. So I want C++ 20 or 23. Uh, that's what I want. I don't have it yet. I'm between 14 and 17, depending on the project, mostly 14. As for containers, um, I want an open addressing hash table. Uh, so because sometimes I'm willing to pay the price and work with the uh, with the limitations to get better performance. And I want a small vector. Uh, I want a vector with small buffer optimization. And then maybe if uh, if it's free lunch, uh, I would be interested in getting uh, like a fixed size uh, array that I could, like a fixed size vector, which is basically an array that you can grow uh, in size. So I don't have to, basically everything that I don't want to re-implement myself. And if we insist, I could use a bet set that is just not using a vector of bool as a, as a name and as an API. Because vector of bool will actually is a good bit set. It's just a terrible vector. And that's mainly the beef I have with it. If you rename it, it's actually an okay bit set. Uh, does anybody else's question? We still have a um, small time. I think we're done with the questions. So I guess we can close for that and you should be able to find me uh, during the rest of this conference anyway. Maybe not immediately because I really need to run for lunch, but... Uh, <laughs> It's starting to be 1.30 here in Sweden. Uh, but after that, yeah, absolutely. I'll be hanging around. And you can always find me on the internet. Uh, my, my contact is here. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in that, the first Accumulate benchmark on QuickBench uh, is, is here. And I made like the, the, the crazy graph I made with the uh, like four different settings combina combined of uh, build uh, is actually a small thing I have. Uh, B1, there is code generation in CMake. But that's that's what allowed me to do those benchmarks. Cheers, everyone.